Hi, I'm Bill, and this is In the Library. Happy Independence Day weekend, everyone. Let me know down in the pinned comment what you're doing this weekend. Today, in honor of this holiday, a book about the start of it all, Nathaniel Philbrick's Bunker Hill, A City, A Siege, A Revolution. Now, yes, there was the Boston Massacre and the battles of Lexington and Concord. These and other events in the years building up the Bunker Hill did start to unite the colonies against Britain. But according to Philbrick's take, it was Bunker Hill that was the first major battle of the Revolutionary War. But first things first. While there was fighting on Bunker Hill, the real conflict was on the adjoining hill, Breed's Hill. As a New Englander, I knew that, but what I didn't know, or at least what I had forgotten, is the reason why. It's because the colonial generals and other authorities bypassed Bunker, which they were ordered to take and defend, in favor of Breed's Hill. It was a confusing, complicated time in Boston. And in this video, I'm just gonna scratch the surface. It is a good book and I do suggest you read it. But many in Boston and other colonial cities at the start anyway, didn't really have an issue with the crown. Their issue was with parliament. As you know, parliament was issuing bill after bill, some taken back, others not, that raised taxes on the Americans without giving them any representation. That, of course, came to a head and eventually gave us the siege of Boston and the battles on Bunker and Breed's Hills. Much like in his book, Mayflower, Philbrick takes us deep into the political, military, and civilian aspects of his subject matter. This book is divided into three sections. Liberty, which brings us back to the beginning and explores life in Boston leading up to and beyond the massacre. What life was like there in the first rumblings of revolution. Part two is rebellion, exploring the battles of Lexington and Concord and the building up of the war with the construction of defenses on Bunker and Breed's Hills and the battle itself. Finally, the siege of Boston, the year-long lockdown of the British on the then tiny island of Boston and the further building up of defenses as colonial militia is transformed into a continental army. While George Washington watches the British evacuate Boston and set off to Canada to regroup. Along the way, we meet all the major players in the story of the build-up to revolution, from Samuel and John Adams to George Washington and all of the Americans. On the British side, as you might expect, are William Howe, members of Parliament, King George, and others. As the story is told, all these political and military minds come together in an epic battle. This book also includes pictures and maps of the people and places discussed here. They are an excellent addition to the book. In the end, Philbrook paints a vivid picture of the beginnings of the American Revolution, full of power and intrigue. It is well written, well researched, and a very good book. Philbrook is quickly becoming one of my favorite historians. That's all for this week. Please click here for more book reviews. And as always, thank you for watching. Please keep on reading.